Hello and welcome to the ninth machine learning and pattern recognition for use with algorithmic trading in stocks and forex. Where we left off, uh, we were comparing the most recent pattern, which is here, to all of our previous patterns, which was here. And we were generating all the similar patterns, printing them out, and also printing out the predicted outcome. And the most recent pattern we got was an outcome of most likely to be a drop. As we look through the patterns, we could tell that they were at least somewhat similar, right? You know, just by looking at the numbers. But it's always helpful to kind of look at it visually. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. And that's going to be, you know, looking at this stuff visually. It'll be very simple to do this. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to plot them up with matplotlib here. And so what we'll do is. I think what we'll do is we'll print it out, print the predicted outcome, and then we'll come down here after we've printed out the predicted outcome, and we're going to graph it. Now, the since we have 10 digits, basically, what we're going to print is XP. So it's going to be like the X, right? So the X axis is always going to be the same. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the X axis, or X variable, will always be just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and a 10. Next up... We want to have a figure, and so we'll just say fig equals plot figure. So this just kind of makes up a figure for a matplotlib to plot upon. Next, we're going to just do plt.plot, and I believe we already imported matplotlib as plt. Yeah, or pyplot as plt. Yeah, we have everything we need up there. Come back down here. Where was that? Here. Plot.plot. .plot. First, we want to plot xp, and then we're going to say pat for rec. Next, we're going to do plt.plot. And again, we're going to plot xp, and we want to plot this time each pattern. And that's it for plotting, basically. The only thing we need to do is bring it up with a plt.show. Now, we can save that, and we can run this. And we drag this over. So we can see here, here's the pattern in question, and then down here, this is the same pattern in question, obviously. And, per, and then this is the pattern it's comparing it to, and then outcome is quite possibly a negative. It should have brought up a chart like this, and as you can see, uh, very similar lines. So we can close out of this, and it brings up another chart, and this <clears throat> will bring up to the point I mentioned earlier, how the beginning is more likely to be very similar, than, or more similar than the end. So as we can see here, the end result of these lines is slightly different. Now this line could in theory come back up uh, to further match this, but it hasn't, and we're just comparing this pattern. So anyways, that one wasn't too sexy, but the next one, this is the pattern, very close, especially on the end. We can close out of that one. And then we, you know, you can keep keeping, continue keeping track of, you know, your outcomes here. These are the patterns, that's the outcome. Come back to this, close this out. Does another one, pretty similar. Anyway, so you can see now, oh, here's one where it diverges at the end again. Um, I'm just going to close through them and get, get done now. Um, done. So as you can see, uh, now you can display them visually. The next thing that we could do is let's say we wanted house sim to be maybe 80. It has to be above 80 this time. So we can look at the ones that are purely above 80. Now we're all, the only ones we can possibly see are going to be the similar ones, um, and there is none. There is none above 80% similar. Um, interesting. Anyway, we would have seen the same patterns because everything that was above 80 was also above 70, so it wouldn't have mattered. But anyway, you can see where the threshold was, was somewhere between 70 and 80. So that's going to conclude the ninth video. In the next and tenth video, what we're going to be doing is actually uh, lengthening this pattern. Obviously, really, like, the 10 plots um, is just a, a bit too short for a pattern. Obviously, it depends on your time frame, right? But our time frame is very, uh, very zoomed in. It's of high granularity. And so it might make sense to look at longer-term patterns, or at least a bit longer of a pattern. So, so as we move forward, what I would like to do is actually, instead of uh, 10 uh, points to consider, let's consider... 30 points. 
And once we do that, we should do the same thing that we've done and plot that up. So here's an example of one with 30 points that we're going to be doing in the next video where, um, as you can see, it's a similar line, a lot more variables in the line. Um, and then there's an end divergence here, which again is, is fairly likely using the method that we're doing. But anyways, um, that's going to be in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.